Lindsay was born in 1982, January 16th. He was a uh, wonderful, caring, charismatic, charming, laughing, loving boy. Just such a heart of gold. You know, no shyness and nothing. He would talk to anybody anytime and hug anybody at any time and just help out anybody at any time. He fit in really well with the people at his high school. So I wouldn't hear anything, and so I figured that he was doing all right and in school. Um, no, not so much. And that's when behavior started. Um, I started noticing a lot of acne, sweatiness, a little bit of mood irritations and so on. And I just, I, I really figured something was going on. So I did ask him if he was using cocaine. And he was like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. And, and he didn't typically lie to me about anything. One morning, I had noticed little things missing through our house, so I knew he was taking stuff and, and pawning it. I just yelled at him and said, I know you're doing coke, so just come clean with me, quit lying. And he just started bawling. I'll never forget it. Just crumbled on the side of the couch and said, it's not coke, mom, it's heroin. I just about stopped breathing. I think he might have still been 15, just about 16. He was, I want help. He got on the phone. We phoned a million places. We finally got him into a detox. He got out of there and there was a six to nine month waiting list for treatment. So he just carried on, assured me he wasn't using. Then it just went back and forth. I can't even tell you how many times. And that's kind of how Lindsay's life went. Lindsay wasn't using a, a huge amount and he just wanted to stay and maintain. So that's what we were working on and doing. So I was out at this concert. I had my on-call phone, my phone, and they were all ringing. The people around me were getting very upset. I took a call from Lindsay, went outside. I asked him what was going on with him. He said he had been in the hospital, but he was out. He said, I need help. And I said, I'll, as soon as I get home tonight, I'll put the money in for you. I got a call again at about 20 after 11. And I looked at my phone, saw it was him, because we were still at the concert. And I just flicked it open and just went, Linz, I'm still at the concert, give me till 11.30. And I hung up. And that was the last time he ever called me. In the morning, I tried him again. He didn't phone me, he didn't answer my calls. So I just thought, well, well, you know, give him a day. On the Saturday, I phoned the cell all day long. No answer, so I kept hitting the last number Lindsay called me from. And I phoned that for days. I crawl into bed and I look at my phone and there's a message from someone I don't know. And I open the message and it's, when's Lynn's service? I'm gonna miss him so much. And I text back just real quick, like, what? It took me almost two hours to verify that Lindsay had passed away. And then we found out that Lindsay had been last seen on the 12th. Uh, the night that I had talked to him last, and he had been lying in his apartment, dying for four days and dead for three in a supported housing building that was supposed to be checking on him every 24 hours to our understanding. Just horrifying, alone. And with no drugs in the system, he died from sepsis. Lindsay had things and reasons to live, and he wanted to live. He didn't want to die. He didn't want to die alone on a floor. I know if he would have had the type of care in a program run like the way the HAT program has been run, he would be alive and doing very well today. You don't have to be a sober living person to be a, a, a respected person in society and be able to contribute to society. Everybody has their stuff. And just because you are an addict or an alcoholic or whatever you are, doesn't mean that you should be treated any differently by anybody in society. If there is a way that you could give these people a safe life, and then let them let their mind clear enough so they can start making some choices for themselves and maybe some of those choices will take them out of where they're at maybe some won't but that's that's up to them at least they'll be safe and they'll be alive and that's what counts